Okay, well, we're going to keep going. Uh, chapter 4, Geography 142, Circulation, Atmospheric and Oceanic. The big picture here is wind. Uh, it, without wind, we would have this excess of heat at the equator, which would make it uninhabitable. And then as we went toward the North Pole in places where our very, uh, very populated areas of the world, North America, uh, Northern Asia, would be uninhabitable. They would be too cold. When we talk about when we have uh, this movement of air across the Earth's surface, we're looking at two properties, speed and direction. And when we, t when we name a wind, we name it uh, from the direction that it's blowing from, not to. So a, nor a nor'easter would be from the northeast, a nor'wester from the northwest, and a westerly wind from the west. D wind has three driving forces and one oppositional force. Uh, pressure gradient are, is, is the difference between high pressure and low pressure systems, and that causes movement of air. The Coriolis effect causes the deflection or the turning of air kind of in that sets up those circular uh, cyclonic motions. And gravitational forces is just a physical uh, relationship to cold air masses which tend to uh, seek lower elevation. And then friction is the uh, slowing down of wind due to elements on the Earth's surface. Uh, whether it be trees, buildings, mountains, whatever. Pressure gradient force determines the speed of the wind. High pressure cells, uh, wind is descending, sinking down toward the Earth's surface. Low pressure cell, wind is moving up. And that uh, just juxtaposition between wind moving up and wind moving down creates moving, movement across the Earth's surface. When we talk about a high pressure system, it's called um, a cyclone. These are, uh, I call them high and dry uh, areas of the earth. Um, the air descends, it spirals out, the, it's deflected by the Coriolis effect, uh, and air moves to the right in the northern hemisphere. So these are high and dry, clear sky cyclone. Think about the Wizard of Oz and Dorothy Gale. Cyclones are areas of low pressure. So if the atmospheric pressure is low, air can ascend. It can move up into the uh, atmosphere. As it moves up, it hits cooler areas, and the air tends to uh, condense and form uh, rain clouds. So here's an example of, low, of high pressure, air is descending, low pressure, air is moving up. And the difference between these two creates wind patterns. I'm going to skip this one. Um, when we look at global circulation patterns, then we're looking at four pressure areas on the Earth's surface. Two of the result of temperature. So high temperatures cause uh, equatorial low pressure troughs, and cold temperatures called uh, cause weak polar uh, cells. And then in response to that, on either side of these, there's winds that are moving because they're being pushed. Uh, so these are called kind of dynamic. Uh, winds that are being pushed by the high and the low pressure systems. So you might see a chart like this on an exam um, that asks you to fill in uh, the blank so that um, you're able to identify where these uh, atmospheric pressure cells are and um, what their air temperature and moisture regimes are. I want to look at this picture. Uh, spend some time studying this diagram um, in the book. And what this shows is this dotted line is called the ITCZ, or the Intertropical Convergence Zone. And this is an area, and you can see these uh, two yellow area arrows on the um, right hand are on the east of this globe, are moving toward each other. And this is where two uh, air masses meet. And they meet over the equator, basically. And this is an area of t uh, typically low pressure. So because there's low pressure, these 
uh, air masses are moving over the ocean. They're collecting a lot of moisture. They move up into the atmosphere, and as they move up, uh, the air condenses, it cools, and you get a lot of rain. So this is why you have rain over the tropics, because of these air masses meeting over a low pressure zone. The air continues to move in these cells or circular patterns called Hadley cells. All the moisture has been squeezed out over the equator. So as this air gets pushed uh, south or north, if you're at the other end, the air gets cool and it begins to descend. And as it descends, it it reaches the uh, this tro the uh, Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn area of the Earth. And there's no moisture, so these tend to be the areas of the Earth's surface where we have large deserts. So take a look at these circulation patterns and where these things happen. Here's kind of a diagram just showing the latitudinal movement of the ITCZ. So when we move away from um, global winds, which are the uh, Coriolis effect, uh, there's a couple videos on the Coriolis effect, so take a look at those. Um, and there's also some videos that show the Hadley cells and the, the circulation patterns between the ITCZ and the uh, polar highs and lows. There are four smaller scale winds that I want you to understand. Land sea breezes, mountain valley breezes, catabatic winds, and monsoonal winds. And land sea breezes, uh, the book has these diagrams and basically what it talks about is this idea of continentality where during the day the land heats up faster than the ocean. You saw that in the last chapter. And as that air mass is moving, that air gets displaced or it pulls in ocean air, which is much cooler. At night, you have a reversal. So at night, the land cools off faster than the, than the ocean uh, does. And so the air sinks over the land mass and you have an offshore breeze. So these are daily patterns of onshore during the day, offshore at night. The same process happens uh, locally when you look at mountain areas. You're seeing my nice slide here that's not finished. Um, in in uh, mountain valley breezes during the day, um, the valley areas heat up much faster than the high altitude mountains do. And as those air masses heat up, um, air rushes upstream, or upstream, up mountain, uh, upslope. And then at night, the valley cools, or the mountain cools, sorry, and the air condenses and cools and drains back down into the valley. And on a much larger scale, this is also the process of catabatic winds. These are called gravity drainage winds. These winds are uh, have a, just a high amount of speed. They can be up to 200 miles an hour winds, and they happen, again, at a, on a continental scale. So over large, large ice masses like Greenland and Antarctic, these are super cooled winds that then uh, seek lower elevation. And then the last wind type uh, <clears throat> that I want you to be able to understand are the winds associated with uh, seasonal monsoons. And I'm going to switch slides and go to the um, the summer. In the summer, um, the ITCZ moves north um, up over the the, the middle of uh, India, and this area, <clears throat> I'm sorry, in in uh, Asia, um, heats up very quickly. The continentality is working again here, so this gets very hot as these uh, areas heat and rise, then it pulls in all of this warm, uh, moist air that's over the Indian Ocean. As that air comes in over uh, India um, and runs into the mountain ranges, it condenses, it cools, and it creates large rain uh, events. Um, in the homework, you're going to look at um, one of the options is to look at the uh, extreme temperature event and and Russia is one of the one of the issues and I do believe that as this area got extremely hot and and uh, experienced extreme temperatures this area also in India had ex uh, higher than normal or extreme monsoonal activity so the opposite then um, in the in this in the winter 
the ITCZ moves southward and so instead of uh, pulling air in uh, over the continent uh, this area cools and dry uh, cool air then spreads out over uh, over the Indian air uh, Indian uh, region now you don't just have monsoons in in Asia we have them in North America we have them we have seasonal monsoons in New Mexico and Arizona um, Australia Indonesia so they're they're a global pattern so basically be able to understand those local winds what's driving that what's moving uh, those Hadley cells that move circulation patterns and be able to kind of understand this whole dynamic of wind movement